My name is Audrey, and this is my video lesson plan for Celeste. I will be teaching Celeste ballet. The purpose of my lesson is to help Celeste understand that dance is one method of art that can help us express our happiness and gratitude for life and for our bodies. I chose this concept not only because I love ballet, but because by Celeste's age level, physical strength is increased and her athletic skills dramatically improve. I felt that this would be in her zone of proximal development because she's becoming more coordinated and because her age shows an increase of energy, which promotes the ability to participate in new activities. According to Piaget's cognitive stages, Celeste is in the pre-operational stage, which means she's developing memory, which is perfect for dance, and imagination. During her pre-assessment, Celeste responded that the first thing she thinks of when she hears the word ballet is happy. Isn't that perfect? So that's exactly how I want her to feel. Um, I also remember the time when Celeste came into our classroom and she did a wild crazy dance in front of everybody. So I knew from these experiences that Celeste already has a personal theory that dancing in general is super fun, easy, and always makes you happy. So the understanding goals I have for her are to know the defining characteristics of ballet and identify a few French ballet terms and their meanings in English. And also understand that ballet allows us to create art and express happiness no matter what our bodies look like or how much experience we have. The performance goals I have for her are to be able to perform a short dance combination. Um, and do that with little help. And also be confident enough to improvise her own dance using some of the moves that she'll learn in her lesson. Our lesson will be held in the yoga room in the Heart Building. The physical arrangement of this room will be conducive for dancing because of its wide open floor and mirrors, which will be useful for Celeste to see her own movement and match it with mine. The physical climate of this room will be comfortable, open, and prototypical of where a dancer might do her practicing. Together, the appropriate physical climate, physical arrangement, and zone of proximal development Celeste should be in a state of cognitive equilibrium. The first thing I want to do with Celeste is have a conversation with her. I'm hoping that as I talk to her, she can get to know me and trust me so that she doesn't feel intimidated by me um, or develop state anxiety during her lesson, which could potentially turn into debilitating anxiety. And that would prevent her from enjoying the dance and even participating in it. I really want her to be excited to dance with me, so I'm hoping that as we talk in this initial conversation that she will develop anxiety that's more facilitating and motivating for her learning. During this conversation, I also want to ask Celeste a few questions so that I can be aware of her schema. I want to know what her idea of ballet is and what she understands about our bodies. I'll ask her questions like, what are all the things you can do with your legs? What are all the things you can do with your arms? Do you think it would be hard to dance if we didn't have arms and legs? <laughs> then I want to teach Celeste that Heavenly Father has given us our bodies because he loves us. And he wants us to enjoy moving around because he knows that makes us happy. And Heavenly Father really wants us to be happy. I'm hoping that this conversation with Celeste will influence her effective domain and inspire her to be grateful to God for her own little body. Helping her see her individual worth and divine worth will hopefully improve her self-efficacy as well as her self-concept. I'll also ask, what do ballerinas dance like? Or what kind of music do you think they dance to? What do ballerinas wear? Then I want to show Celeste the difference between point shoes and soft shoes, allowing her to hold these different types of shoes and knock on the hard point shoes will create situational interest as will the tutu that I'm going to let her wear during my lesson. I'm guessing that because Celeste isn't very shy, she doesn't have any trait anxiety that would prevent her from feeling comfortable. Um, I imagine that her individual physical state is going to be super energetic, super antsy to get started. So to avoid the risk of boring her, 
I want to get her moving and explain the importance of warming up our muscles before we dance. We'll stretch a little bit and do a short exercise to get all of her wiggles out. After the wiggles are out, I'm going to provide Celeste with a prototype of what a ballerina should look like by demonstrating a few ballet moves, drawing attention to my shoes, my attire, and asking her to describe the defining characteristics that we've already discussed and new ones that she sees in my demo. Each move I demonstrate will give her a positive instance of a ballerina's movement and the concept of ballet itself. Then I'll have my friend Ashton stand next to me wearing clothes and shoes that a hip hop dancer would wear and ask Celeste to tell me why my friend isn't a ballerina. Ashton will do a few hip hop moves to give Celeste negative instances of ballet movement. Comparing the two of us will give Celeste a visualization of what a ballerina should look like and what she should not look like. I want to teach Celeste the definition of grace and teach her that a ballerina's primary defining characteristic is that she is always graceful. I'll be teaching her these and other defining characteristics by using information language, making sure to say why ballet is defined the way it is. I'll also share some correlational characteristics as well, such as clothing that they usually wear or places that they can perform. Then I'll move towards working with her psychomotor domain by teaching her several ballet moves and letting her practice. I also want to work with her cognitive domain by teaching her the French ballet terms and their meanings. These will be moves and steps that are included in the short dance that she'll memorize and perform. Because the translated French terms actually describe the movement itself in English, for example, plié means to bend, I feel like it will help her assimilate what she's actually supposed to do with her arms and legs. As I teach Celeste ballet moves, I want to maintain an appropriate proximity by standing in front of her so she can see me, but also face the mirrors together so that she can see herself too. This positioning should allow Celeste to use mirror neurons to watch me and do as I do. The mirrors could potentially be distracting because Celeste's age is very egocentric. She could have a failure to store if that happens, so plan B will just be a turnaround. <laughs> Um, once Celeste knows a few moves and is aware of a few terms, I'll start teaching her the choreography for her dance. I'll be using a lot of control language here so that she can just immediately follow my directions. Um, and I also want to reinforce the moves that we've gone over by repeated, repeatedly modeling them. I'll need to be really good at cueing her movement and helping her know when to start, when to go, when to stop. Um, and I need to also be really good at recognizing her cues to see if she's ready to move on, or if she doesn't understand something, or if I'm not being clear enough. Um, I want to clarify her misconception of turns. In her pre-assessment, she called them spins, which is an overgeneralization. I'll need to teach by direct instruction the different kinds of turns there are in ballet, the easiest one being a chenet turn. It's also possible for Celeste to make undergeneralizations and assume that all turns in ballet are chenet turns. Um, if I use expository instruction to explain how these terms are different um, and how they're connected, then Celeste can better understand each turn that I teach her. If I come to find that any of the moves are too hard or too quick for Celeste, I will accommodate the choreography and make it a little easier for her. Teaching her a sequence of choreographed steps will test her short-term memory and may be difficult for her, However, even if she has a failure to retrieve, I don't want her to rely too much on me and create learned helplessness. Rather, I want to build her self-esteem by encouraging her and reminding her that she can do it, providing help when she needs it, but giving her enough praise during the teaching process that she feels confident to do it on her own. These are all forms of intermittent reinforcement. The goal is for her to be able to dance all by herself. We will integrate all the steps that she learns to music, which will trigger her sensory register. When it comes time for her to perform for everyone, I want to teach her about a critical element in performance execution, which is smiling. During our lesson, Celeste may be intrinsically motivated to smile because it will be natural if she's having fun, almost as if there's an imaginary audience. 
When she's performing for real people, like her mom or her siblings, she may be extrinsically motivated to smile. Both will give her good practice and help her enjoy dancing. After she performs the choreography, I want to give Celeste a minute or two to do some discovery learning and allow her to use what she's learned in our lesson, applied with what she knew and felt before she came, and create her own dance. I want to teach her that it's important to express yourself through music and that it can be whatever you want it to be. This will illustrate her ability to express her own emotion and feelings in a way that is creative, imaginative, and independent. At the end of her lesson, I want to invite Celeste to teach her siblings or her friends at church or preschool some of the moves that she's learned. This should be fairly easy for Celeste to do, considering that she is at the latter end of Eric Erickson's Psychosocial Stage 3, Initiative versus Guilt. When given the opportunity to initiate activities with others, Celeste will develop security in her ability to lead. I may even invite her to teach her favorite move to whichever family member is there that day. At some point in the lesson, I need to present Celeste with a moral dilemma. I want to ask her questions like, or present her with a situation like, well, my arms are a lot longer than yours. Does that mean my arms are better than your arms? Or your legs are a lot skinnier than my, my legs. Does that mean your legs are better than my legs? All bodies are different, but everybody is able to dance. When we meet people who dance differently than us or look differently than us, what can we say to them? After presenting Celeste with this dilemma, I'll be looking for hot cognition as she responds. I want her to remember that kindness in any sport is an important part of our own happiness and growth. Her response will give me an idea of where she is developmentally considering Kohlberg's stages of moral development. Given the scenario and her young pure heart, I predict that she'll be at or near stage three. I am so excited to teach Celeste and I'm so excited to get to know her and introduce to her a new skill that will at least give her an appreciation for an activity that can help her express happiness and joy um, for life and for the fact that we have bodies um, given as a gift to us from our Heavenly Father. Thank you so much for listening.